Like any good software for getting information from people, Typeform lets you ask choice questions, such as multiple choice and yes no questions, and a few variations on these. What we're going to do in this one is we're going to start by duplicating one of our previous forms, the one we created for text questions. What I do for that is I come to my workspace here, I'm logged in, I've gone full screen. We're just going to come here and we're going to come down and not preview it or metrics, but we're going to duplicate. So when I click on that, it's going to create a new form, it's going to ask me for its new name. I'm just going to come here and change the name to TF0132Choice. This is Chapter 3, Section 2 on Choice. So I'll hit Confirm. And now I've got my new form right here. I'm going to click on that so I can edit it. And now I've copied it from the previous one, so I need to make a few changes. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the introduction just a tiny bit. That's the welcome screen. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to add a small description that will appear right above the start. And I'll say, this is the form for TF01 underscore three underscore two choice. And so it's a technical name, but sort of there for my own use. We are keeping track of what's what. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to leave this one that asks name because I'm going to use that in a few others, but I'm going to get rid of a bunch of the other questions. I'm going to get rid of this one about email addresses. I'll hit yes. I'm going to get rid of this one that asks about a few other things. And I'm going to get rid of this statement right here. Okay. But I still have the name, so I'm going to keep that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a few different kinds of choice questions as opposed to the open text questions that I had previously. We'll begin with this one over here. It's an obvious one. It's multiple choice. So I'm going to click that and drag it over here to the drag and drop space. And now I get to say, what's the text of my question? And I will put this, I'll say, which operating system do you use most often? Okay. And then I'm going to put a little note here, I'm going to put a description that says, please choose only one answer, just to emphasize it. Then I get to come down here and I get to give the choices that they get to choose from. Now there's a lot of potential choices, but I'm going to put down some of the mayor play, excuse me, but I'm going to put down some of the major players, I'll put Windows, and I'll just hit return. And then I'll do Mac OS, as it's now called, that's Apple computers, and then I'll do Linux and uh, leave the variations implied. And then I'll actually I'm going to delete that one because what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to add other. So you can see that we now have a, a D for other. The reason I used the button here to add that instead of making it as text is because I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to randomize. So when different people come to this page, it won't always be Windows, Mac, Linux. It'll shuffle it around. But because I use the other option, other will always be the last one, which is kind of helpful because I've dealt with situations where the other bounces around and it's a little frustrating. So I'm going to hit save, and that'll be our first question here. Then I'm going to do a variation on multiple choice. So I'm going to drag multiple choice in again, put it here beneath. And I'm going to ask another question, I'm going to say, do you use do you use any of these programs or languages on a daily basis? Okay. And then here, I can give several different choices. I'm going to give a few more than I did previously. I'll start with R, then I'll put Python, then I'll put Bash, then I'll put SAS, then I'll put SPSS, and then I'll put Excel because people use that a lot. And so I've got six choices here. Now you see the way they're laid out here. I've got, they go across by default over here on the right side. So it goes A to B to C to go across. It's a little awkward when you have 
more than, you know, four. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down and first I'm going to force vertical alignment. So now they're one above another. That makes it a little cleaner layout. But people might use more than one of these on a regular basis. And so what I'm going to do here is click this one that says multiple selections. I'm going to hit that. And then I think I will also do randomize. So they show up in different orders for different people. That's going to be helpful. So it's going to shuffle them around, but they'll always be in vertical order. The nice thing is it will still give me the data in a consistent order. And they can check as many as they want, as many as apply. So I'll hit save on that one. Another option we have is picture choice. It's multiple choice, exactly like it sounds, except this time, instead of writing words, you're using pictures. So I'm going to do one where I actually have a question that I'd like people's answers on. And it's about the icon for bash. So I'm going to say, which of these icons do you most associate with the command language bash, otherwise known as terminal in the Mac, where it's accessible through the terminal, it's in Linux and even Windows now. And then what I need to do is I need to upload a series of images. Now I've saved some to my desktop, some images that I made on my own. I'm going to hit upload. And then here's number one, that is actually just the icon for terminal for Mac, I'll hit open. And then it shows the image over here. Now I need to give it a label. I'm going to put the terminal icon. However, I'm not going to show these labels because I want people to focus on the picture. So I'm going to come down here and say, turn off the labels. You see how it went away. But the thing is, you actually have to have a label for each of these. That's a requirement. And so even though you don't want them to show, they have to be there for Typeform to do this. So I'm going to go and hit plus to get my next one. I'll go to upload. And that's a shebang, it's called. I'll call that shebang. And then I will get my third one, which I'm going to call bin bash. You can see it's really just an extended version of the shebang. And then I'm going to add a last one, which I click upload. And I'm making this my none of the above. And really what it says is none of these mean anything to me. I'll say none of the above. Okay, now let me come back down to settings here and say, if I turn on the labels, you'll see that show up here beneath each of these pictures. So there's the pictures. But again, I'm asking a question about icons. And so I don't want those there. So I'm going to turn them off, but they do have to be there in order for the question to process. All right, I also have an option of doing something here called supersize. And when I do that, you see it makes the pictures a lot bigger. But that actually, I think is intrusive with what I'm doing here, the smaller ones are just fine, and it keeps them all in one row. That's good. I could allow multiple selections, except in this case, I want to know which one do they most associate, I can randomize them, that's usually a good idea. And I could put in another option, but for this particular one, it doesn't meet my purposes. So it looks like it's all there. And I'm going to hit save. And now I've got that question. The next kind of question that I can ask is drop down. And this is when you have a multiple choice with a lot of choices. Again, think about what state do you live in or what country are you in, you can have a long choice. And I'm going to drag that over here. I'm going to do something slightly different with it. Again, you might use country or state or year of birth. Those are all reasonable ones. I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm actually going to ask a trivia question in this case. I'm going to paste it in here because it's a little long. And I'm going to replace this little brackets when I type stuff out. Um, and now it's I use that for the variable name. I'm going to add a variable because I asked people their name at the beginning. 
All right, let's try a trivia question. Who won the NCAA Division I Women's Soccer Championship in 2013? So that's college athletics. And what I need to do now is come down and add my choices. Please note, it's a minimum of eight, because if you had fewer than that, you would want to do a regular multiple choice question. So let me get my answers, and we'll paste them in there. Now I have a list of schools that have traditionally done very well in college women's soccer, but it's not the 2013 list. I'm going to paste them all in here. And they're by recent rankings. And so you see there's Stanford's at the top. And then we got, you know, number 25 here, Utah, which is the school right by my house. And I want those to be the ones that people choose from. Now, here's an interesting thing. I've been randomizing the order of other questions. In this case, I don't want to do that. In fact, I want people to be able to sort through these quickly because if they know the answer, they're going to want to be able to find it. So even though I did not put these in alphabetical order, I mean, here's Auburn coming after Duke, I can tell Typeform to put them in alphabetical order. It's not going to change the way it appears here in my window, but it will change the way it appears when people are taking it. Let's see if we go right here. See, now it's in alphabetical order. So that's what we needed. And then my only other option is, do I want to make it required? I, I don't. I'm just going to hit save. Now I'm going to follow this one up. This is a trivia question. It has a right answer. I'm just going to follow it up with a statement. That's something we looked at previously in the last section as a way of telling people what the correct answer is. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to paste in a little bit of text here. The answer in 2013 is that UCLA won. And I actually have the option of changing the button here. I'm going to change that one a little bit. I'm going to put in, I knew that, dot, dot, dot. I'm also going to put in an image because we can have a little image here of UCLA. I've got an image of the icon and I've put it there while you weren't looking. But here's UCLA. We're going to put that in there. I'm originally from Los Angeles and UCLA was my home school. So I'm, I'm proud of that. And that's all I need right here. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to finish off with one more kind of choice question here. And that's a yes, no. So I'm going to drag that over here. And I'm going to ask a little question. And it's a follow up to my trivia question. I say, now, did you really know that UCLA won? And I'm going to let people say whether they did, but I'm going to do something I haven't done before. And that is in the description, I'm going to, I'm going to say, tell the truth now. And then I can put the person's name in. I like to think of this as a little honesty manipulation. I can put that right there. And that will be my final question. Now, just as a way of wrapping things up, even though I'm going to continue creating more variations of surveys with more questions on them, I'm just going to finish with a short statement here. I'll drag that down. And here I can say, well, hopefully you now know a little more about how you can use Typeform to ask choice-based questions. Thanks for joining us. And that's a nice thing I'll put down here. You're welcome. And that's going to be the end of my survey. So that's, I'm done creating the choices now. But it is always good to check it out when you're done. And I'm going to come right here and say, view my type form. And that's going to open up a new tab, even though I'm full screen, so you can't see the tab being created. And here it's rendering, and it has the logo that I created earlier and my introduction here. I'll hit return to get start. I'll say my name is Bart. What operating system do you use most often? Well, most of the time I use Mac. So I give that a C. I just did the C on my keyboard. Do you use any of these programs or languages on a daily basis? Well, 
I use some of them pretty often, maybe not daily, but I'm going to put for right now, I'm going to put R, Excel, and SPSS. Those are my most common ones. I'll hit OK. Which of these do I most associate with the command language bash? Well, I most associate A, although personally, I like C, the shebang better, but I'll hit A. Who won the NCAA Division I women's soccer? You know what? I am going to, I can type in the answer. See, it, it, it brings up the possibility. So there's a Yukon right there. Or I can, you know, hit the button like I had here and scroll down. And I'm going to say, I'd like it to be Utah, but I'm going to say UCLA. It says, in case you're wondering, is UCLA? And I say, I knew that. And did you really knew that? Well, I learned it a few days ago. So I'm going to hit yes. And that's the end of my type form. We see that it flows the way I want, it gives the one question at a time, throws a person's name in occasionally, makes it engaging, and gives you a nice impression of the variations for asking choice based questions. There's a lot of other ways you can get information in type forms, and we'll look at those in some of the following chapters and sections in this course.